Hello everyone, welcome to Apti Place Academy for Civil Services. This is a video on daily news and editorial analysis, which I'll be covering from the Hindu and Indian Express. So the most important news and editorial of the day that is relevant for both prelims and mains examination perspective will be discussed in this session. Let's get started with the news topic list. Today is 6th of August. The first news that is no immunity in the criminal cases for the member of parliament during the session. This was categorically stated by the Raj Sabha chairman or the vice president of India. Second panel concerned over the fall in the STSC scholarship scheme beneficiaries. So the panel has raised a concern. Third, prepare infrastructure for the development of monkeypox vaccines because we have seen the cases as rising the monkeypox. And second last, monetary policy committee raised the rate. And the last is an editorial addressing challenges in the new age digital commerce right to kis tarah ki problem hai digital commerce mein uske bare mein detail mein editorial a brilliant editorial that will give you an insight about the resolutions which is arising in the part of the digital commerce apart from the news and editorial at the end of this video there will be mcq based questions and these questions will be based on current affairs that will help you for the upcoming prelims examination so without any further delay let's get started and before that, if you are new to our channel, do not forget to subscribe Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services on YouTube. If you like this video, if you find this video informative and helpful, do not forget to press a like button. So starting with the first news of the day, that is no immunity in the criminal cases for the MPs during the session, right? So this is precisely with regards to the criminal cases. There are some other procedures with regard to the civil cases. We'll see the detail of this. So this particular news is important for general studies paper too. That is parliament and state legislature structure, function, conduct of businesses, power and privileges and issues arising from it. So recently the Rajya Sabha chairman has clarified that the members of the parliament do not enjoy immunity from the arrest in the criminal cases when the house is in session and even they cannot avoid the summon which is being issued by the law enforcement agencies. So, in any way, if you have a criminal case in criminal cases, then in session ke time, mein bhi member of parliament, which is the Raja Sabha or Lok Sabha, ke, they can be arrested or can be summoned. Right? So, why this is there in the news? Because recently, the leader of opposition in the house, the uh, LOP leader of opposition in the house, he was uh, no, basically given the summon by the enforcement directed EDN unko summon kiya and that was a debatable issue which they have raised in the parliament basically congress ke taraf se jo leading opposition party hai unhone concern raise kiya ki during session kaise ho sakti hai so in that context only the rajya sabha chairman has categorically stated that these immunity is not provided now kya constitutional provisions hain in this regard under Article 105 of the Indian Constitutions, the member of parliament, who MPs, hote hai, they enjoy certain privileges so that they cannot perform their parliament, so that their parliamentary duties are not disturbed in any way, in any way, not disturbed in any way, disturbed in any way, so that Article 105 mein immunity is provided. So what are the privileges? One of the privileges is that, that the member of parliament cannot be arrested in any civil cases. Jo civil cases agar uske chal hai, then he can be, uh, basically he cannot be summoned or he cannot be arrested. This is only in the civil cases and not in the criminal cases, right? So jo criminal cases hai, unme ye applicable nahi hone. Now 40 days before the commencement of the session, or the committee of the meeting of 40 days thereafter. So 40 days pehle or 40 days baad unki arrest ko allow nahi kiya gaya as per the constitution. Now the privilege of freedom from the arrest is limited only to the civil cases. I have already given you the fact and it has not been uh, basically I have not been allowed to interfere in the administration of the criminal proceedings. So agar criminal proceedings hai, kahi, kisi ki se summons hai, criminal proceedings mein, Court may appearance only that is mandatory. The individual, the member of parliament, has to go. Now, some individual privilege of the member of the parliament. The member of the parliament are entitled for the freedom of speech in the houses, and they are not liable in any court for the proceeding and the speech given in the parliament or its committee. However, it is regulated 
and using the rules that is guided by the provisions of the house. This is an important point. I think most of you must have read this from the static section of the Indian polity. Now, the other immunity is that they are exempted from the Zuri services, right? So, they can refuse to give evidence and appear in the witness in any case pending in the court with the parliament in session. When parliament sessions are in session, they can avoid the cases in any witness they can avoid the witness. Again, not in the criminal cases. Now, exemptions from attendance in witness, the members of the parliament, assemblies also enjoy freedom from the attendance as a witness. Or last, that is the right to publish debate and proceeding. The parliament or assembly can prohibit the press to publish its proceeding when needed. Kuch or basics immunity hai. Uske list aapke liye itne zada important hai. If you want, you can check that details from the Indian polity book in the Lakshmi Khan or any source, standard source that you are referring with. Now, Supreme Court ne kuch apni observations di hai with regards to the immunity that is being provided to the member of parliament specifically, right? So what the Supreme Court has noted that in the recent case, the state of Kerala versus Ajit and others, they have observed that the privileges and immunity are not the gateway. Ye kisi bhi se gateway nahi provide karti hai. And claim exemption from the normal, basically the general laws of the land, usse follow karni ko zarat hai if a criminal laws is implemented, right? Which govern that for every citizen, the law should be uniform, right? Kisi individual ko alag privileges nahi mil sakti hai. Beat law is common to everyone. Now the court has noted that the member of parliament can claim no special status higher than an ordinary citizen and is much liable to be arrested or detained during the session, right? So this is specifically with regards to the all criminal cases that is pending before any member of the parliament. Now the other news that is panel concern over the fall in STSC scholarship beneficiaries, something relevant for your general studies paper too. That is welfare schemes for the vulnerable section of the population by the center and the state government. So a parliamentary committee on the welfare of ST and SC has recommended that the parental income, the parental income is the amount of money, that is 2.5 lakh rupees is to increase up to 8 lakh rupees. It should be revised to 8 lakh rupees. Why this recommendation was given? Because the panel has noted कि जो enrollment है बच्चों की वो काफी ज़्यादा कम हुई है for the pre metric and post metric scholarship. What is pre metric scholarship? Pre metric scholarship वहाँ पे बोलते हैं जब बच्चे class tenth में होते हैं this is called pre metric. Post metric means when you are pursuing your class eleventh or class twelfth together, right? So this is called post metric. तो इनमें जो बच्चों की ratio है वो काफी ज़्यादा कम हुई है. This is only because जो family income है वो two point five percent तक रखी गई है, right? So the panel has recommended this should be augmented and this should be revised to 8 lakh rupees. Because jo EWS categories mein log hai, unko 8 lakh rupees tak exemption milti hai, then why not the students belonging to ST and SC community, right? So the committee of welfare on ST and SC while submitting the report has noted that the censor that discriminatory against the Ministry of Justice and Empowerment and Ministry of Tribal Affairs who guide the center sponsored scheme, this is called CSS is my changes on the key zero now demand for the increase in income limit as I've told you categorically that your numbers has to be done in the past EWS categories may six lakh rupees the work at the key which is now eight lakh rupees so why this student have only been given an exemption of 2.5 lakh rupees this should be increased to eight lakh rupees also right so the committee on the welfare of STSC are in the view that the parental Stealing for the income of 2.5 lakh rupees should be raised because the cost of living or economic growth case upset 2.5 is very less, right? So what they have wanted, they demanded for 8 lakh rupees. Now the committee censored that discriminatory action against the ministry and even the committee on the welfare of STSC has also underlined that scheme act as a catalyst for increasing the aspiration of the beneficiaries to pursue the higher education because See, monetary problem is there in India. It is evident. Because of the financial crisis, if government is aiding, this is a real subsidy that government can provide, right? So, if the educational subsidy is given, its benefits ultimately will be in our economy. Because he will be contributing in the national GDP. Whatever the income generation will be, the contributions will be in the national development. 
Now, beneficiaries ke agar data ko dekhe, what is the number, what is the astonishing fact coming from this data. So according to the data which was submitted in the report, the number of beneficiaries under the scheme has fell sharply and this was specifically uh, from the data that was taken from the Kendra Vidale. So if we talk pre-metric scholarship, mein baat kare, the number of beneficiaries for 2017, 18, 19 and 21-22 ke So earlier in 2017-18, it was 10,234. Now it has decreased up to 7,436. Why? Because the capping of the amount is 2.5 rupees. This amount is not able to do this fall. Nahi kar pa rahe. That is the reason the committee hai, house panel ki 8 lakh rupees ke recommendations. Ko hai. This is also applicable for the EWS. So why not for the SC and ST people? Right? Now, assistance ke agar baat kare, financial assistance under the guideline, the STSC beneficiaries for the pre-metric scholarship should receive at least 225 rupees per day for the day scholar and 525 day for the hostels and also get 750 to 1000 rupees annually for book. These are all things complimentary, these add-on unko milne ki zarurat hai, right? And under the post matrix scholarship, the SC beneficiaries receive somewhere close to 2500 to 13,500, 3500 annually depending upon the level of education. Now the ST beneficiaries between the 1200 and 250 on a monthly basis depending upon the course of the enrollment. Now both ministries have submitted that there is no proposals to consider to raising the amount, right? So this is again the government need to rethink about this and they should implement it at the earliest because this is the need of the hour. Many people are you know, exempted from the services to get this benefit which should actually be given to them. So kafi log is se hai. and even the beneficiaries are not getting the adequate amount as per the inflation and considering the other expenses that is ongoing. Now the other news that is prepare infrastructure for developing the monkeypox vaccine, something important for general studies paper too, that is issues related to development and management of health. So with the eight cases that have been reported in India, some cases has also been reported from Delhi. Delhi se cases report kiye gaye, Mumbai se cases report kiye gaye. So these were the cases that has been reported. So government has come up that a task for constitute karne ke zarurat hai. And these will be recommending how the critical infrastructure is needed to develop the indigenous vaccine for the monkeypox, right? So monkeypox is a disease which is a cause of concern. Even WHO has taken the cognizance and even it is a level up to endemic, not pandemic, but pre-endemic categories mein isko rakha gaya because globally there are cases nikle. Now it is expected that the development of dedicated vaccine will take over because there were several gaps figuring out of the approach to be dealt with. Now, this is definitely a public health emergency. As I have told you, WHO has taken the cognizance and they have declared the monkey pox to be outbreak as a public health emergency, right? And the experts are of the opinion that the monkey pox was unlikely to immediately require the mass vaccination, right? Even it is being suggested those of the percentage of people who have not taken the third vaccine, they should immediately get the vaccine done, right? So, you have to say that you have Puri vaccines nahi liye, even third dose bhi nahi liye, so get it done, right? And the monkeypox is structurally more stable compared to the SARS-CoV-2 virus. If we talk about infectiousness, then SARS-CoV-2 is less infectious, hai, but again it is lethal. It can you know, basically give infection to other people also. So what is monkeypox? You can see the images like similar to the smallpox but less severe and less infectious. Symptoms ki baat kare, fever, headache, swelling, ache muscles and exhaustions, itching rashes and even milieu and face, hand on feet. How it is spread? Close contact with the infected person or animal and touching, clothing, bedding, using some kind of the rashes, right? This is a viral disease, infectious hai. So, this way, we need to take precautions like this. Treatment as of now, smallpox vaccine and antiviral drugs can help to relieve the symptoms of the monkeypox. But this is not the actual drug. Abhi bhi iske discovery nahi hui hai koi vaccine. Now, MPC, basically Monetary Policy Committee raised the rates, something important for Jinnah Studies Paper 3, that is Indian economy and issues related to planning, mobilization, resource, growth and development. 
So the Reserve Bank of India's Monetary Policy Committee have recently increased the repo rate by 50 basic points. How many basic points are increased? That is 50 basic point, and this is this is not percentage. This is 50 basic point, right? And the current repo rate is 5.4 percent, right? Now the third, this is the third high that the RBI has taken in the repo rate within three months. So three month ke span me, three bari RBI ne jo rate se wo badhaye. The Reserve Bank of India has raised the repo rate by 50 basic point. Earlier it was 4.90. The RBI retained the inflations and the GDP growth projections for the current fiscal year, ending in March 2023 at 6.7 and 7.2% respectively. So these are some future projections that the RBI has done. You can take a note of this because this type of data is pretty much relevant for your examination. Now, these are the graphs to help you understand repo rate ke mein. current repo rate is now at 5.40 SDF ki baat kare at 5.15 and MSF is 5.65. Now what is repo rate? I think this is very much known to everyone. Repo rate is a rate, basically repo rate is a rate, is the interest rate at which central bank lent to the commercial bank. Agar RBI kisi commercial bank ko lend karti hai, that is called the repo rate. Now what is reverse repo rate on the other hand when bank allows to deposit fund with the central bank and it earned interest on them this is called reverse repo rate. Now India mein retail inflations ki agar baat kare, the retail inflations had stayed up the, above the reserve bank of India tolerance level that is 6% for the straight 6 month in June because the committees hai, unhone 4% plus minus 2 ki baat ki thi. but again the toll was above 6%. The price indicator has touched an 8 year high of 7.79% and recently the RBI governor said that the inflation is expected to remain above the central bank that is 6% threshold in second and third quarters of the fiscal year. Now volatility ki baat ki gaye jisse se volatile market hai, global market is volatile considering the current situation, the global situation. So the RBI has taken a note that the volatility which is there in the global market has impending upon the domestic financial market and leading to the importing inflation. Just for just inflation is there on the rise, right? And if it, there has been a commodity price rise. So, and abhi reason mein dekhi gai hai, kuch softening hui hai price. Why? Because Ukraine is delivering its what we supply through the Black Sea region. Tampering, this will lead to the decrease somewhere close to the consumer price inflations right so it's my time lagi ki jis tarah se ukraine aur russia ki war chal rahi hai uske baad kafi zyada global prices crude oil ke wajah se bhi you no know, even it has impacted to many sectors so the reason has led to the inflations now after the ukraine agreed that they will supply wheat and a proper channel was provided via black sea it will definitely be uh, relaxations or you know, basically relief to many countries now economic growth prospects ki agar baat kare, the IMF specifically has revised the growth rate for the India and it says that the projection is expressed as a REX and the IMF has cut India's economic growth rate to 7.4% and for the April estimate it is 8.2%. As per the RBI, the real gross domestic products has been retained to 7.2%. So if you comparison the IMF, World Bank or RBI Kino ki jo data hai, unko compare kar sakte hai for the global forecast of the India or any global developments. Now moving to the editorial of the day, addressing the challenges in the new age digital commerce, something relevant for general studies paper too, that is government intervention, government policies and intervention for the development of various sectors and issues arising from a design and implementations. So, what I'll be discussing in this editorial, there are some important subheads that I'll be discussing with you. The first is the small and medium sized business, right? Other is open network for the digital commerce, implementation of ONDC, dispute resolution system, or merits of online dispute resolution. So the entire editorial has a focus is upon the theme that is digital commerce and dispute resolution system. So looking into the consumer behavior, it has experienced a radical transformation from the most fundamental level 
like the online process has taken a toll in India, right? Be it is food delivery, be it is online shopping, anything has become, you know, basically, if we talk about consumer point of view, so all the things in e-commerce level are increasing in India. Mein now, the rise in the smartphone has fueled up the affordable data plan. Even the data plan is affordable and has catalyzed the online revolution in the country. Now, the novel coronavirus pandemic has further accelerated the digital inclusion globally. Work from home, even everything was app based. You have seen many app launching for every entity, right? So, you know, user experience but again, with coming to the online services or e-commerce, the problems are So, we'll understand what are the other concerns. So something about the small and medium sized businesses, kya ye aise log hai jinko actually benefit hui hai? No, these are the not people they have actually been benefited. How? We will see that after the rapid increase in advancement of the digital platform which is arising, small and medium sized businesses, there's a local kirana stores ki agar baat kare, they have not gained that momentum because everything has become online and prepare not the log hai jo individual hai, they don't prefer to go to shop, rather they are getting delivery in their home itself. Right, an online purchase from near and now has become an inventory for the local stores and remain a digital vacuum. So, the bad case small vendors are not possible that they maintain their inventories maintain kare, digitally sare ko operate kare. So, this is a bottleneck or challenges. Now, this is because the sell on the numerous platforms, sellers must maintain a separate infrastructure which has an additional cost and limit participations. Consequence to this, jo smaller medium sized businesses, hai, they have lost their freedom to choose their participant in the country and e commerce system with own and their right. right? So, they, these are the challenges that these small vendor has been facing with because abhi ab dekhe, metropolitan cities mein, they are running with 10 minutes delivery system. Right? 10 minutes map delivery. Lenge. This is not across India, but for some major cities they are operating with, which has severely impacted not only for the Kirana stores, even to the vegetable vendors. Now, open network for digital commerce ki baat ki thi government ne, which will be the government has come up with this to provide a level playing field. So the Department of Promotions and Industrial Trade has come up with the open network for the digital commerce. Well, it called for providing a level playing field, but other ONDC ki baat kare, it make possible for the product of the services for all participating e-commerce to be displayed across the platform. Jitne bhi apps hai, sare jagah ko ek jagah aggregate karke dikhaya jayega. Example ke thawar pe, for instances, a consumer shopping a product on the e-commerce, suppose he is shopping on the app name X, right? And receive from the e-commerce name app Y, so this will be a single platform where he can make an order and get benefit of both two apps. It's like uh, just to name Flipkart or Amazon map individual order karte hai, so ek platform hogi jahan pe dono ke mix or match sellers se order kar paain, right? So this is just an example and this achieve a dual objective of the consumers on one hand and to access the wider consumer base for the seller on the other hand. Now implementation of ONDC ki agar baat kare, jo open network hai, this is, has been done recently in the pilot project. Kuch important cities hai like New Delhi, Bengaluru, Coimbatore, Bhopal and Silo. Ye cities mein pilot basis pe incorporate ki gai hai. Gradually government has uh, promised that it will be upgraded to 18 cities in the country. And with the India's e-commerce industry set to 200 billion by 2027, this is an anticipation, the expert are of the opinion. So this can have a paradigm central, no, basically a kafi zyada changes la sakti hai, consumer behavior pe, even democratizing the national market and catalyzing the inclusions of million of small businesses, owner and kirana businesses. Now dispute resolution systems ki baat kare, because if an e-commerce platform is operating, the problem will also be there equally. So we need to have a resolution in place. So dispute will be the obvious byproduct of the e-commerce revolutions. So this is an imperative that a support system should be there and initiative should be there which should be cost effective, timely and high speed dispute resolution is there. So online dispute resolution has a propensity in the alongside and it has incumbent set up with the quick, affordable and enforceable outcome to help the consumer benefits. 
while the odr commonly involves to manage the system integration of communication technology such as email sms whatsapp interactions ya voice conferencing ke through bhi ye cheeze operate ho rahi hai now merits of online uh, dispute resolutions ki agar baat kare bahut sare benefits hai first it help mitigate the risk which is provided online digitalized entire value chain jo facilitate karti hai best user consumer experience ko it mitigate the leakages and provide valuable insights now the courts and the consumer forum can do away with the matter not warranted invented in the judicial logja agar yahi pe resolution mil jayegi to unko baad mein court approach nahi karna padega court ke paas nahi jana padega right and a dispute resolution framework include a customized odr right online dispute resolution process that can make this possible aur ye target aane wale 5 saal mein aur acche se improve ki ja sakti hai adding 48 billion dollars to the gross merchandise or india e-commerce ki baat kare a network of 90 crore buyers and 12 crore sellers can be there so these are the advantages of the online dispute resolution suppose if you get a question in mains examination aap ye sare points ko highlight kar sakte hain moving to the mcq questions of the day before i proceed just to tell you the answers of yesterday questions for the first question the correct option is c for the second question also the correct option is c today's mcq for practice फिनेंशियल एक्शन टास्क फोर्स के बारे में आपको बताना है फिनेंशियल एक्शन टास्क फोर्स इज अ इंटर गवर्नमेंटल बॉडी एंड द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ एफ ए टी एफ इज टू सेट स्टैंडर्ड एंड प्रमोट इफेक्टिव इम्प्लीमेंटेश लीगल रेगुलेटरी एंड ऑपरेशनल मेजर्स ऑफ द मनी लॉन्ड्रिंग एंड टेरर फिनेंसिंग सो डू चेक इट आउट फॉर द करेक्ट ऑप्शन सेकेंड क्वेश्चन ऑफ द डे दैट इज रिसेंटली द यूनियन गवर्नमेंट हैज अप्रूव साइनिंग ऑफ ऑफ कंप्रीहेंसिव इकोनॉमिक पार्टनरशिप एग्रीमेंट बिटवीन विच अमंग द फॉलोइंग कंट्रीज India Mauritius India Sri Lanka India Japan or India or Maldives so do check it out for the correct option this was all about for the daily news and editorial analysis followed by the mcqs if you have any other concern to let me know i'll be more than happy to assist you for time being i'm signing off thank you so much for watching this video